Well, thank you everybody for tuning in today. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome to uh, the Sangreal Show, Charles Franny, the uh, publisher and author of the Slain Dragons Press and Apostolate. And Charles has recently uh, come out with a new book called The Occult Among Us. And a uh, very fascinating read. Uh, it's the, the third in a series that he has produced about um, spiritual warfare matters. He's talked to a lot of exorcists, former occultists, got a lot of great research. And in this, uh, this particular volume uh, was endorsed by none other than uh, Bishop Emeritus Joseph Strickland from uh, East Texas. And uh, His Excellency very kindly joined us as well today to share his uh, insights on the, the state of affairs uh, in uh, spiritual warfare and what we're seeing in the culture. So uh, Your Excellency and Charles, thank you both so much for joining me today. So Charles, um, you know, thank you for all the great work you're doing, um, you know, at Slaying Dragons. And, um, you know, I, I finished reading The Occult Among Us uh, and just last year uh, read the second book, The Rise of the Occult. And it's fascinating how <laughs> you point out just how pervasive the occult has become uh, in mainstream society. I mean, it's like it's so it's so in, in, infused in everything that we we probably don't even really think about it as much as we should, or we we kind of turn a blind eye to it because it's so familiar. So, now, Your Excellency, let me let me bring you in on this. Um, you know, so Charles's latest work was. Uh, you know, was endorsed by both yourself as well as Bishop Schneider and uh, Monsignor Rossetti, who uh, I believe is the, uh, the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. So, um, you know, some heavy hitters there, if you don't mind my saying, Your Excellency. So <laughs> why, um, why did you feel it was needed to lend your voice of support to this work? Well, really, Paul, um, I've appreciated Charles' work from the beginning, first book that I read, The Slaying Dragons, and it just resonated with a lot of what I was seeing as a diocesan bishop, and I continue to see um, in the world, and, and just the effects of evil. Uh, like you were saying, Paul, I think there, one of our crises is a real loss of supernatural faith. And it's even people within the church, sometimes very high-ranking members of the church, as far as the hierarchy, they at least speak as if uh, this is all just sort of an organization to belong to, and we can change the rules as we wish, and there's really no supernatural element to it. And without the supernatural, the faith becomes just a, an, an emptiness. Uh, it doesn't have its power because... It's all about the supernatural. Um, and there, I, I've just thought that Charles's work is very important. We see the results of evil, even though many times people, the, the world is, is really anti-faith at this point in so many ways, at least what we see in the popular culture and what's spoken of. Evil unleashed begins to, to have its effects. And and one of the key passages from Scripture that this always draws me back to is where St. Paul says, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers and principalities of evil. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we are definitely fighting those virtually at every level of society at this mm -hmm. point. It has to be, I believe, uh, a sign of, of giving in to evil. I really liked what Charles, the image that he used of spiritual woundedness, because it made me think of, you know, I'm not a, a physician, I, I, but I, you know, I have a basic understanding of how our body works, our physical body. And what occurred to me as Charles was talking about the wounds that people that get into the occult, the wounds that they're carrying around. Imagine if we could see, I mean, if you know, to put it into the, the physical realm that people are walking around just living out their daily lives with terrible gashes in their body and terrible wounds. I mean, what that does physically is open them up to infection. And, and what occurred to me as uh, Charles was talking is spiritually, it's the same reality. These wounds of 
deep spiritual wounds, mortal sins that have really left people vulnerable to being infected by all kinds of evil and attracted to that evil to, to somehow deal with those spiritual wounds. And I think what Charles's work has helped me to see is a man who definitely believes in our supernatural faith to see the, the forces of evil that are there always trying to drag us away from the light of Christ and from the power of good and love and truth. And so I think Charles's work is essential for us to be alert, not, I mean, I always say not so much fearful because Christ has conquered this evil, but alert and awake. And again, going back to the, to the physical, if you have a wound, you need to be vigilant to not get it dirty, to not expose it to uh, sometimes devastating infection. If you have an open wound on your body, that's just the physical reality. You've got to be very careful. And I think that Charles's work helps helps those parents who may have children that have wandered into this to at least be aware and to begin really praying and, and guiding them if they will listen. And thankfully, people do come out of the occult. People do convert from Satanism to Catholicism and to live the truth of Christ. So I think Charles's work is essential, especially for this time of tremendous turmoil that we're living through. Like with this work, with like what Charles is doing, it's pointing out, um, it's pointing out the disease that's out there, but it, it's, you know, the, um, the cure is our Lord, right? It's pointing people back to this is how you overcome these things. You're not going to find happiness in all this occult and, you know, pagan idolatry and things that are going on. I mean, so, so the priest needs to lead. And then once he's embraced this reality that, um, as Charles said, there's a whole menu of evil out there, but there's only one Lord, one Savior, one light of the world, and that's Jesus Christ. And to keep bringing our focus back to him, I think that's what pastors need to be doing. Or even those people that Charles has talked to that are caught in the occult, what their hearts are yearning for is the light of Christ, the truth of God the beauty that God brings to us as creator of the universe. Um, so the longing is the same, and it's, it's deeply sad, but always hopeful to bring people that are deep into the dark pathways of evil and the occult. They can be brought back, but the power of bringing them back is always going to be the power of Christ because he's Lord of love, Lord of light, Lord of truth. He is goodness incarnate. And he's the one. It's not to me or to this group or to that way. or It's to Christ that we have to bring people back into his light and trust in his power to transform lives. I'm sure Charles has spoken to people whose lives were utterly transformed by encountering deeply the light of Christ. Charles and uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, the book is The Occult Among Us. This is the third uh, third such work from Slain Dragons Press and uh, a compelling read. Uh, it's good work for, for both you know parents and family members as well as for people who may find themselves uh, attracted to things that they would do well to avoid. Uh, it's a good primer to understand the state of affairs.